We are. John we Scott are. here, Powered for Four, and I've got Mr. McCarthy, Alex McCarthy, me. you <laughs> with me. Uh, mate, we're here. We've just done a very busy, very busy very. session in press and media. Uh, did, did you like the vibe of it or? I hate, uh, I'm coming in strong. Is that word? Uh, I hate to, like the two minute thing is, is a bugbearer of mine. You can't really get into the flow and you just have to ask them what you want real quick. Um, but then sometimes that works. I did get some really good stuff. Uh, you know, Finn Balor in particular, I really enjoyed. And I haven't seen him in a while either. Really good to see Rhea and Drew again. But uh, I would like more time. I do, you know, we're recording Talk Wrestling tomorrow and we do have three people lined up for that. So I'm looking forward to actually sitting down, doing Not an interview in, in the in the truest sense. Yes. Well, it's funny you say that. We've got someone in behind saying two minutes <laughs> for you. Um, no. Uh, now listen, mate. Uh, we, everyone has been talking about 30 years. We've all wanted this big stadium. I'm yeah. going to play devil's advocate because I am that way. But are we not getting a bit of a glorified? How showy because it's a different title. It's not SummerSlam, is it? SummerSlam sure, was pushed sure. into July. Like, I'm just saying, like we're all commemorating SummerSlam 1992, but it's not SummerSlam, is it? No. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, this still is an event, but are we not sort of 15 years a bit late? I mean, it, I, I guess it's semantics, right? Because it's it's 30 years since the stadium show. That is true. Um, would it have been great if they had done it at SummerSlam? Preferably. You know, I, I did do the report last year uh, when it came to that they were going to bring it to Cardiff. I, at that point, I think the fact that it could be SummerSlam was still discussed. But then quite quickly they said, you know what, actually we'll make it a standalone show in September. And I think one of the main reasons to do that is the roof, right? Is when they could get the Principality Stadium. And they learned from WrestleMania 36 or, what was it 36 in Tampa? I think it was. Oh, where, it it, where it rained, right? Yeah, and Samoa yeah, Joe yeah, and the poncho. Yeah, I think great. they were like, you know what, we need a roof. Uh, and that's why the Prince Valley was always the front runner, to my understanding, to host this event. So that kind of, that made WWE get their ducks in a row, right? They had to do it a certain way. And I think that dictated. Is it, a, is it how show, you know, like the early Saudi shows? I don't think so. I think there is a legitimate chance that Drew can get something in the main event. Really? I, I, anywhere else in the world, I'd say who no. Who have you been talking to? No, I'm not. That's what I'm, I want to know. Who have you been talking to? Um, but... I, I do think there's a chance just for where we are. WWE would love to make history. They do view Drew as a top guy. Um, I, I don't necessarily think they should. Don't tell Drew. Uh, and, and obviously there's every chance that Roman retains it because Roman's Roman. I'd stay with Roman. But they are giving us, uh, they saved Riddle and Rollins for this. Mm-hmm. We've got Gunther and Sheamus who are going to beat seven shades of you know what out of each other. Yeah. That is, it's a good card. Whether you want to get into it and say, oh, you know, could it be better? This I is mean, a good card. Just, I mean, there are some notable absentees. Sure. We're, no we're Ronda. Yeah. You know, no no uh, Lesnar. No Becky. You know, Becky. Uh, yeah. you know, there, uh, there's, there's, Logan Paul. Well, is he, does he go into that equation nowadays? Yeah, Logan Paul. Do we want yeah, to I like him? Logan, but yeah. come on now. But t- the Tyson Fury. He's at ringside. Uh, yeah, he's at ringside. Yeah, we know it can be a boxing type finish on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> Get in the ring. Yeah. Well, everyone. I mean, I, I think, yeah, like you just said, when, when the match is done, yeah. it's likely that then he'll... Uh, probably getting in, there'll be some shenanigans. But it wouldn't make sense if Drew won. If you're going to do that, yeah. I, I don't know. I hope they don't reverse and do something like Braun comes out again. Um, no, anyway. <laughs> right, let's go to football. Let's, sure. take a, let's take a relax now. Let's let's chill. Now, last time I spoke to you, I saw about Mike Ashley. You never get rid of the bloke. <sighs> now, now change, it's eh? a nightmare. I mean, this has got a, it's got a little bit of a link to WWE in some aspects in this one. Um, but, mate, you must be buzzing. I, I am. Just, I mean, like you said, it, it, I, I'd rather it wasn't the money wasn't coming from where it's coming from. But at the same time, I think as fans of a football club, in the same way as a wrestling promotion, it's really not our job to police the finances and the, you know, the backroom stuff. You, you support the entity rather than the means. Mm-hmm. Um, so for Newcastle, a lot of our fans, we're just overdue to have something to be excited about. So many years in the doldrum, you know, we didn't break our transfer record until Jalinton. We, you know, I think that was about 15 years in the making where every club is doing it every summer. Um, we really were just getting by. We suffered two relegations uh, during that time where we're just literally trying to be a Premier League club. And now, finally, and, and Newcastle is a hotbed whether people want to, you know, if you've ever been to St. James's, you'll know it. Fif- over 50,000 every week. It has been a sleeping giant. But what's pleased me the most 
is how calculated our transfer business seems. I was going to say, they're not doing what Man City first No, did. no Rubinos and Alanos. Yeah, because and all they this. were just greedy players they looking were. for a payday. So they're being a little bit smart, and they know that teams are going to up the ante for their players. Although yeah. the guy you signed the other day does look the real deal. Isaac looks very so good. I'm a little um, bit concerned about that. I'm not saying he is Haaland, but he, he is like that mole, six foot four, mobile, powerful. Like can finish like that. That is the modern day striker that's going to dominate football these days, and I'm glad that we've got someone like that who's got his best years ahead of him. I'm like it. Like we're targeting a Jal Pedro and Madison. I know we didn't know end up getting them, but we might in future windows. That is the profile of player you want to be getting. Bruno Gamares, he, he could play for anyone in that league. Mm -hmm. He could even play in City. I've said it here. He could play for any club. He is a he's a top top midfielder. Sven Botman looks like he's been a great signing. We're signing young, hungry players who are in demand, and they could go to bit bigger clubs, but obviously we're using some financial muscle to, to bring them to Tyneside. And you look at someone like Bruno, he loves the club already. Like he's, he's fully invested. Dan Ashworth's coming from Brighton. I'm very, very happy how it's working thus far. <laughs>